What is the perfect digital workspace for humans? This is transformative. Hello, and welcome to Transformative, a coffee break podcast about transforming the workplace and making your technology feel a little more human. I'm Sam Glover, and interviewing with me, as always, is Kai O'Main. In this series, we're talking about the productivity revolution, breaking down what is required to build a physical and digital workspace for a modern workforce. So thank you very much for listening. And don't forget the conversation continues on LinkedIn. So join in on the discussion on Transformative Showcase page over on the Boxy's LinkedIn profile. In today's episode, we're talking about mental ergonomics and specifically building a workplace that puts people using it first. Although there are many dis- definitions on being productive that we can talk about. And in this one, we wanted to put the focus on that productivity onto you, onto me, onto anyone that uses a digital workspace day in and day out. Can we be productive and think about worker well-being? Joining us around the table to discuss this is Craig Griffiths, partner and technology strategist at Microsoft, and Matt Hocking, founder and designer at Leap8 Design Agency, and a B Corp Better Business Cheerleader. Obviously, of course, you can also find out more about the productivity revolution over on our website. So go to boxy.com slash modern work to find out more about how you can optimize your workplace. But for now, let's just get to it and join the conversation with Craig and Matt. Today's today's topic is one which has actually had me and Kai like batting about the discussion of it completely. And it's it's to summarize it, it's mental ergonomics which is what sparked it. It was it was realizing that most of our workspace is designed to fit around us. Like the chair is designed ergonomically so that it that it arches the back and is safely supported. The desk is at the right height. The you know even like air conditioning is designed to the optimum temperature. So how do you design the digital workspace to have that same level of detail in the design that is personally tailored to each individual? I was like, Kai, what was like, your Kai, what 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 was your perspective on on this? Yeah, so I mean, there, there are definitely Kai. two sides of the conversation that I'm I'm really interested to have. Um, I think definitely an, an early question for for Matt is just so you, you work in a creative field where I imagine people find their best work in in different ways, um, and I kind yeah. of wondered what role technology might play in Leap uh, in helping to nurture the best creativity from individuals, kind of what that process tends to look like for, for you guys? Well, yeah, the, well, it's, a, again, a good question about what the process looks like for us to nurture digitally. I, I think a lot of that is around accessibility. You know, we have more our fingertips and our eyeballs than ever before by simply searching um, on Ecosia. We, we only use the best um, uh, eco search engine. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> uh, and Mm. So for that, that we can train people in new skills, take a chance here, you can use a new platform for digital post-it. We love post-its, paper-based, as we talked earlier, yes. but at the same time, it's really easy when we can do it all live. We do a lot of co-discovery, so we work with, you know, at the moment, Bernardo's and Ikea on an independent living program, and that's all having to be done online with a variety of tools to co-design with young people going through a care journey. So that's that's all live, all, all the digital tools, all the footprinting and stuff is done that way as well. So for me, it's a combo of having the right tools, which always with digital, the great and the great thing about digital, it's quite agile. You can try something out. Does it work? Does it not? Should we adapt? Do we need more plugins, more actions? And I think Craig wants to say something. So Craig, jump in there. <laughs> just on the just on the accessibility piece, I think that's such an important message, the accessibility yeah. piece, because technology is for everyone. And obviously from from a Microsoft perspective here, I suppose it's if we look at the accessibility um, developments on the Windows operating system over time, we've got things like Narrator, we've got Focus Assist, we've got um, Immersive Reader in OneNote, we've got Color Filters, there's all these different things. And I think that's such a strong message with accessibility. I, I'm really, really happy to, to hear about it more. And on that kind of like customi- customization approach, right? How, how, what kind of tools 
like what kind of Microsoft tools can you actually design, use to kind of actually design like a unique experience like for each worker and how they work individually? I think I think every, everyone kind of works differently, don't they? And I think the, the devices that we use and the way that we've interacted with them, I think they've changed over time. Like I remember my first setup, like what, 10, 15 years ago, probably, probably more maybe, and it was like a traditional desktop PC and I had dial-up broadband and I had multiple devices. But devices are now consolidated into um, just like a tablet and a laptop all in one. And I think that now gives us the ability to move towards a touchscreen environment so some people will learn better uh, and we've talked about it previously where you can learn better through writing things down and you can be creative in a more personal way now and i think that's just really uh, i think that's a really cool feature of all the microsoft products where you can kind of work how you want to work so if you want to open up whiteboard if you want to open up sticky notes if you want to ink on things you can do that yeah so Matt, it's, well, what Craig was saying just made a really interesting sort of observation of an action we've taken. So, I'm a very literal kind of briefer creative director. I, I talk and I see see solutions as I meet people and an action. But some people are listeners. Some people need to visualise these things. So, we've ended up using uh, a, a tool that both records when I'm in with a session. So, the client in Chicago that I had a briefing session with. Um, for the next stage of their site mapping and web, web project. Um, I recorded that using an AI recording tool that also did a note um, version of it. And that, mm. that oh, anything wow. that I repeat multiple times in that tabulates it. So if I mentioned B Core X amount of times or ethical clothing, it would create a separate tab that you could just search on ethical clothing. And then I send after the session the transcript and the recording to our team to then analyze to create a new brief from. That's really cool. So it makes it really easy. And for those that can't quite keep up with my to- my pace of speaking or, I- <laughs> or ideation, that means they've got the more methodical, just read through it, read through it again, read through it again. All right, mm. I've got that bit. So, And that's just adapting to our team of finding more fluid ways to for the briefing process when we're not together in an ideation space. Mm. Um, and it works really, really well. Yeah. And I'm like I know for myself, like note taking's always been a big challenge in my, like from, from my my history of things. Being being someone that's come, come up learning, trying to learn from being dyslexic, note taking has always been the problem. Of by the time I finish my notes down, it's the thoughts moved on, the conversations moved on, and I've I've so like yeah, any innovations in that side, I'm always always in favour of. And Kai, you've, yeah. you you wanted to weigh in? Yeah, absolutely. I, I guess I'm just quite curious. Um, Matt, from from your perspective as uh, as you know, kind of a leader in your in your business, has remote working in the pandemic maybe dealing with people a bit more individually? If you've had to work with people in a remote working context, changed the way that you might design or think about the workplace. You know, once people are able to get back in office and how you might want to structure things to get the best out of people. Just quite curious as a, as a kind of business leader, what what, what the pandemic might have uh, shifted for you. <laughs> well, interesting one about what any change in the pandemic, because so, what I realised is we kind of were living in lockdown before the lockdown, which I think some people would acknowledge <laughs> that happened for them. But what we had noticed on a wellbeing fact, that, you know, I live in a beautiful county, you know, nature's on our doorstep, water, beaches, uh, woodlands. But we weren't taking enough advantage of that. We were fixated on our digital window, our perspective of the work we were doing in the world to save the world, yet we weren't in, in the world. And so yeah. when mm-hmm. we relocated our offices in uh, 2019, we made a conscious effort about this would actually increase team well-being while using their digital tools mixed with giving an accessible environment around them. Plus, as a business, it cut our carbon footprint by uh, a third or a quarter. I can't remember the stats now. So objectively, mm-hmm. aimed towards net zero, um, plan that we we have in action it had multiple outcomes while still doing the work we needed to do so we are we live a digital life we've had clients around the world since day one you know i've i've, I've worked in the, with clients in the sinai desert to the arctic circle who will ring and say wow. we need this for a presentation to the That's eu so presidency 
or something. So we've kind of lived it, and we're not a you know we're not a super tech business. We just adapt for what people need to do the things they do and the projects there. Yeah. I mean, I'm super not techy, by the way. Um, I'm probably the the. The, you know the, the most <laughs> <laughs> untechy person in the business, but I just know how to do and connect things, and then we employ the right people yeah. for the business, create the space and the tools to be able to do their job to the best for them. We don't always get it right either, um, so you know there is the fact that we are constantly learning. Yeah, One absolutely. I, I really find fascinating is that concept of being in the. Uh, it's like trying to have a workspace that's in the world and not just kind of like isolated f- from it. And a question, like a final thought question I want to ask everyone everyone here is like, do you think like the future of, of the workspace is less of less of the sit at your cubicle at this, uh, uh, let's sit at this cubicle in this one screen kind of thing? And do you think it's more about having technology that allows you to work whenever and wherever you are? That kind of, when you're like walking, when you rather than, Rather than designing a workspace where that you travel to, work, 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 and then walk or go away from, it's the moment that you you're going, like you're you're traveling to the workspace on your phone. You can flag all the emails you want to talk to, and then you get to the workspace, deal with the more focused, heavy like jobs where you need you need the big space. And it's just like starting with Craig. Like, do you th- what do you see? Do you think that that's the kind of the future of productivity in the workspace? I think so. I think I love the hybrid working um, that I think we're probably heading towards. Um, It's usually what you said about around working and sort of going outside as well, because I've definitely gone outside a lot more during the pandemic. I've gone on an obsessive number of walks. And (laughs) so some of of the team will go out with the devices. So say like um, a dual screen device, like the Surface Duo, which I'm hoping Mm. to get fairly soon. And doing a Teams meeting whilst walking with your team and having their faces here and having something else there you can still be productive on the move and i love the idea of doing that going that's, forward that's amazing. and i think from a sustainability yeah. point as well it's done a lot of good um actually because i'm not driving to some of the locations i used to drive to um, i worked in a retail team previously to this role and i used to drive as far yeah. north as carlisle and as far south as reading sometimes whereas working remotely on on teams um i've not had to do that i've fueled my car up three times this year and and that's wonderful you know it's, it, <laughs> so yeah i'm really looking forward to the idea of hybrid working i think technology enables to do that um and a lot of people are, are developing plans to go into that hybrid working environment whether it's in the office or not excellent fantastic and, yeah and Matt, do you think that kind of work from anywhere approach like works for every like for, for what do you think the well might not work for every circumstance, but do you think it'll work from a for a, like a creative job, or like uh, job as well? I think I, that is the world I I like. You know, that is a, a biodiverse world where we can make choices about where we're going to work and how we're going to work, while having access to t- technology, but also the well-being of nature around us. But be it in a city, be it in the countryside, one mm-hmm. of the things is you know having a. a being able to access Wi-Fi, you know, is, is is wherever you are in whatever region, you know, something I know different people are sort of working on locally to globally. But, um, you know, we do, ours is more like a, awareness of, I could very easily just be on a screen for 16 hours nonstop. I have a stand-up desktop work thing, just non-fancy one, just simply because I would just sit there all the time. Because when you're in yeah. your work, you can get very zoned into it. Yeah. And you've got your messages coming in, need this, or feedback on that thing. So having that opportunity, but while having the great thing about the devices we have in our pockets and stuff like that, a, a, a tablet, a phone, that we can do this. So we, we, we have, we try and have as many walk it out sessions as we can with our team to just talk mm. things through, just to break from being in, in work. And also if you come into work and, you know, you might, you know, the other thing, you could take an email first thing in the morning on, on your train or walk into work and that could set you off. You might have already had some something in the night that just wasn't working for you and something. So also acknowledging that work can stop because it is digitally in emails. It's it's going to be waiting for you when you get there. So having a like a yeah. walk out session, you come into work, you notice somebody maybe just looking a bit troubled over a coffee or something and just go, let's go for a walk. We'll come back and then mm. sort emails and stuff like that because it's waiting for you. I say the same with my, this sounds bizarre, but with, not bizarre, but with my daughters, with like Netflix, got to stay up a bit longer, dad, and just watch this. And it's like, it will be there when you get there in the morning. It's yeah. not going anywhere because it is digital. So we've got that flexibility and it only comes down to ourselves to control 
our own actions about where something's right for us and look after our, our own well-being versus our, our digital opportunity in our workspaces. Um, but I'm, I'm a hypocrite to this, by the way. I can be <laughs> on, online from 8 in the morning till 2 a.m. at night working on a project mm. sometimes. I find that fascinating. So it's kind of a, it, part of the part of the kind of the productivity goal is to in it how get the right technology in place to be able to allow you to work however you need to. But it's also about that self discipline to know when when is the right time to do something. So, so yeah, and 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 without blaming technology because it's not technology's fault. Technology is just there to be used to be as agile and responsive as possible for you. Only our own self disciplines mm. can can make that. And whether that's digital yoga or or, or or whatever, I don't know. We could call all ideate yeah. different things. I just think there's this multiple opportunity in the tech space to kind of bring people, planet, well being into. In, into into play to a much more optimized level which gets the productivity we want keeps our team members active excited and retained um mm. and uh if you've got a solution i'm all ears <laughs> so. and, and like we're, we're, we're almost we're almost out of time for this episode but just one thing that's kind of recently kind of come onto my radar recently is microsoft's mesh and whilst I've gotten, whilst I've gotten a designer and some of Microsoft here, just want to this thing which looks like Tony Stark has it's come out of his workshop. <laughs> this kind of <laughs> augmented reality VR th- like device, which is it's designed like the the trailers I've seen, it's got like designers there with a three D like three like a three D thing, a three D design in the space where they're throwing it around and rebuilding and remodeling it. Do you feel that oh, wow. devices like this, like the, like the future, is the future of productivity this kind of like augmented reality uh, space? But potentially, in some potentially in some cases, yeah. I think I've seen different use cases for it in the past, where you've got the headsets on and you can kind of like with uh, mechanics and building out motorbikes and cars and actually teaching how to do that without physically doing it sometimes. And the good thing mm. about that is you can do it from literally anywhere. Um, I've seen it in healthcare as well, where you've got a physician speaking to, say, a nurse, and they're in completely different locations, but they can actually give guidance and advice based on mm. what they're seeing in front of them through augmented reality. And I think Absolutely. there's definitely a future for it. There's a lot of potential there. It's an enormous potential. Mm. Um, as you say, Matt, would that would you if you if you could have something like that, would that be something that you'd find useful? But very much so. I just like Craig said, I think. I think the role of technology, especially in like developing worlds and stuff like that, where, you know, already I know augmented stuff is used in education in certain places and stuff like that, mm-hmm. where you can, you know, walk around a, a, piece of, a fruit or something and talk about that as, a, as, you know, part of your science lesson thing. So I, I think to really look at that, and I mean, I, I love the way you described it with the whole Tony Stark thing, because it is, you know, they, they kind of get it, <laughs> took it in, throw it away. And, and then, you know, I, I think being able to walk around that and and be part of that is great. And going back to the stuff we're doing, Bernardo's, is kind of what we're looking at is a virtual reality toolkit for young people to have positive, independent living experiences. And what would that be? And how do do we make that happen? So that where we are is actually with the young people. What are those ten tools that would make your life easier when you come out of a care journey? So tools like mm-hmm. this would be fantastic. It's then just i guess for us it's as a small business sometimes accessing these things and stuff like that as well mm. yeah excellent so it's kind of it's now we just have to wait to see what wait to see what the mesh can, can fully provide i'm yeah i'm <laughs> itching to be one of the first ones they give it a go <laughs> i guess then you kind of mix it with a 3d printer and it goes from being a digital reality that thing to suddenly it's like star trek there it is as your meal or whatever <laughs> you've just been thinking That's right there in front of you <laughs> blade runner here we come <laughs> absolutely well thank you guys very much this has been like this has been an absolutely smashing conversation so thank you very much craig and thank you very much matt Hey, pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, I really appreciate your time. Thank you both. So that's it for today. Thank you very much to Craig and Matt for, and for you for joining us on the pod. If you want to learn more about the modern workforce, go to boxy.com forward slash modern work to find out more, even book a consultation with one of our workforce specialists. Next time on Transformative, we're going to ask where does your virtual desk go in your virtual office? 
with guests Jamie Hinton, CEO of Razor, and Joe Horbury, Head of Design at Building Interiors Group. Well, that one is going to be a great conversation. And I'll see you next time. Bye.